Okay, there you have it. You can see how easy it is to make your own flour using your own grain grinder. I say easy, I didn't say there's not work involved. We did have a lot of grinding with this. It does take some shoulder muscles, but you'll get used to it if you enjoy something like this. If you don't, you can always get yourself electric motor or you can get the bicycle uh, attachment, which we're going to get so I can exercise at the same time that I make grain. What we're going to do now is we're going to make some five minute bread. What do I mean by five minute bread? Well, I got this book from my wife a while back called Artesian Bread in Five Minutes. This is a great book to have right here. You can get this on Amazon.com or probably some other places. A lot of recipes in this book in regard to making bread. The one we really like is this five minute bread and it doesn't mean you have bread in five minutes. It means the processes that you go through take about five minutes a day to do. Now there's waiting time for the dough to rise and this type of thing. But what we're going to do is we're going to shut off the camera, we're going to get set up for this, and my wife Denise is going to show you exactly how do we do this, and then we're going to show you the final product, bread. And we'd invite you all to join us with it, but that would be impossible. So we're going to eat it by ourselves and let you know later how it turned out. Catch you in a couple minutes. Hi, Denise here. I'm going to show you how to make this first the dough for the five minute bread and then we'll have to let it rise. Um, this is very simple. I have all my ingredients here ready already. This is a very basic recipe. Um, in this bowl is the flour. I measured it out from what we ground earlier. I got my yeast and salt, which for some people might be optional, but we like our salt, so we put it in there. And I got my water. Um, first thing I do is just put the water in my mixing bowl. And then I will add the yeast. And I got a little whisk here and I'm going to just stir that in there and dissolve it. You want to make sure your water is about lukewarm, hand warm when you do this. That way it doesn't take as long to rise the dough after. Um, it takes about two hours. If you use cold water, it can take as long as four or five hours. So that's something to keep in mind. Next, we're going to put our flour in the bowl and you just kind of sprinkle it over top of the water. I used three and a quarter cups of flour, a cup and a half of water. Um, salt, however much you like. Um, I'm using about three quarters of a tablespoon and the same amount of yeast. Put that in here too. Now unlike most bread where you gotta mix and knead and work at it for probably 20 minutes, this is very easy. Just use a spoon and stir it all together. And this shouldn't take more than maybe two, three minutes. All you want to do is mix it all together so that the um, flour is all nice and moistened. And this is going to be sticky when you're done. So it, it'll um, stick to your hands if you try doing this with your hands. That's why you don't need it at all. You just mix it with your spoon. And you can see in just a couple seconds you got your dough all set. And that's it. Mix it up, push it down into the bottom of the bowl, and what I do is I use a moist towel to cover it up and just let it stand here for about two hours and let it rise. You don't have to watch that it rises to twice its size or um, fills the bowl or whatever usually pre bread recipes ask you to do. Just let it sit for two hours, check it, and if it has risen, you're ready to continue. And um, we'll show you how to form a bread and bake it in just a little while. Okay, we're back, and it's been a little over two hours since we finished our dough, and it's now ready to make into some bread. I'm going to make a couple small loaves, being we're a small family, and they keep better as a whole loaf. First thing I do is I'm going to sprinkle some flour over the top of the dough, just so that it doesn't instantly stick to my hands when I go to take it out. 
I also have ready here my improvised pizza peel. It's actually a cutting board and I'm going to sprinkle that with um, cornmeal so that the dough doesn't stick to it. Now the flour that I just put on here, you really don't want to work into the dough. Most of it will fall off as you're forming the bread. And the way to form that bread is you just kind of fold it under on all four sides. What you want to do is get a nice um, span of dough over the top that doesn't have any cracks or cuts. Now the bottom is going to cook, kind of look ugly. I'll show you in a minute. But the top is nice and round, and the bottom, well, whatever. But that's the bottom, so we're going to put that underneath, and you won't be able to see that. I'm going to set that on here, and we're going to have to let that sit for another half hour, 40 minutes or so, just to rest before we bake it. Now, when you make the dough a day ahead of time, you can refrigerate it and take it out about two hours before you want to bake it. It'll help to be a lot less sticky when you go to form your loaves. And this recipe also allows you to keep the dough in the refrigerator for several days if you don't want to use it all at once. Same thing with the second half here. And you don't want to do too much work here on the dough. It shouldn't take you more than 30 seconds, no longer than a minute for sure, to form the dough because it's just going to get stickier and stickier as you work it. And there you go. And after this sits for a half an hour now, we'll come back, we're going to dust it again with flour and I'll show you how to slice the top before we put it in the oven. Okay, it's been another half hour or so and we're ready to get these cut and in the oven. First, I'm going to sprinkle some more flour here and really just sprinkle it. What that does is keeps the knife from sticking to the dough when you slash it. They may not look like they've risen a lot here in the last half hour and they probably haven't, but they will when we put them in the oven. Okay, got my big bread knife here and you can do this any any which way you like. Um, just don't cut it too deep. About a quarter inch is all you want to do. So I'm going to do one just with a cross and I'm going to try to slice the other one kind of in a star shape here. Show you that. My cross, my star shape, and while these were resting here, I preheated the oven to 450 degrees, and we're gonna bake those for a half an hour, and we'll show you how they turn out. At the end of this. When we post this video, we will also post a recipe to use for what we made today. Um, you don't have to grind your own flour to make a bread like this. You can buy any, any kind of bread flour, wheat flour, um, even white flour will work. Um, experiment with it, see what you like best. Okay, let's put these in the oven and while they're baking, we'll show you where we store the grain ma maker mill um, when we're not using it. Okay, as you can see, when we're not using the grain maker grain mill, we keep it on a shelving unit here in the dining room. It has its own shelf, and to the left of it is a meat grinder that stays inside a small bin. This is our what we call our food processing shelving unit center, I guess you would say. 
Underneath that, we keep wheat we're presently using here. We have a bucket of hard red winter wheat and a prairie gold wheat. To the left of that is another bag of the prairie gold wheat. This is a hard white spring wheat. As we move up over the grain maker grain mill, you can see we have two dehydrators. One is a large Excalibur unit and the other one is a smaller unit. And then on the top shelf, we have our two hot pots. These are solar cookers and we've done an article on this. It's on our website. To the left of that is the uh, one of our pressure canners. And on top of that are two sun rockets, which are solar water heaters. We'll be doing a, a video on those in the future here. Okay, we finished baking our bread and here they are. Let me show you a little closer. This looks. And I'm going to cut into one of these so I can show you the inside too. It's still slightly warm and really not quite ready to eat yet, but Just like real bread. Oh, this is nice. We're going to enjoy this. Anyway, as always, we want to thank you for joining us at Survival Resources. Be sure to check out our products, articles, other videos on our website. We can be found at survivalresources.com. I want to thank you for your continued support of everything we do. We appreciate your support, and we'll see you next time around.